All right, and we are back with another episode of On the Bench with Beaks. This is episode 31, and we're having fun. I am your host, Cody, not Brody Beekman, and with me, as always, is Daniel on your steedy beady. Hey, what's up, everybody? <laughs> and we've got Ross the Universe, Mormeyer. The whole universe? The entire universe. Oh, my goodness. And then we've got Shrimp Fried Bryce McMillan. <laughs> Shrimp Fried Bryce McMillan, I will take it. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Gotta love those name puns. And today we have a very special guest. We've got the skating instructor extraordinaire, Jen Tish. Jen, thank you so much for being on. Won't you say hello to all the fine people out there? Hi, everybody, and thank you so much for having me on today. I'm so excited. Oh, absolutely. We are, too. And uh, so we're going to get into it. And if uh, uh, all y'all have ever listened to our podcast before, we love kicking these episodes off with a hockey day in history. And we like to put the guest under the gun uh, very first. So, Jen, what do you got for us for hockey day in history? Okay, so I'm super excited to go first because I didn't want anyone to take this one. <laughs> uh, so, October 8th of 1946, 17 year old Gordy Howe was signed his first contract with the Detroit Red Wings. Ooh, nice. Yeah, I, I, I understand why you were so giddish to get, to get that one going. That one's a beauty. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's really good. I heard he was pretty good, too. He might- yeah. I- couple things about him yeah 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 i mean maybe played a little bit in the in the in the show maybe maybe spent some time other where you know yeah you know. <laughs> he was he was like a unicorn often talked about but never seen you know <laughs> i'm kidding i'm kidding i'm kidding <laughs> oh well seriously that was a beauty hockey day in history we're gonna move it on to uh bryce shrimp fried bryce what you got <laughs> all right boys all I'm right really proud of that, so by the way. on october 8th 1988 so our boy, Ray Bork, at the time was a Boston defenseman, and he actually scored on October 8th his 700th assist, and it was a 6-2 to Bruins win against the Whalers at Hartford. Ooh, nice. very nice. Ray Bork just creating some memories already. Of course, our lucky boy here in Colorado, right? Uh, yeah, I'd at the say time. so. I wonder if Gordy Howe is on that Whalers team. That's what I was going to say. With his, I was also wondering with that, his yeah. Sons. <laughs> as well. Because the WHA was like 79. Yeah. And so. then he was Red Wings before that. Yeah. Uh, uh, he came back. Fact into checked the, us. He Shrimp came fried back. Bryce. Use those tiny fingers. <laughs> Shrimp fried Bryce. <laughs> All, All right. right. While there's a fact check going on, Daniel, what do you got for uh, today's hockey day? Sure. Um, I'm going back to 1976 and October 7th, and we've got the famous Pete Mahovlich, and he picked up four assists as the Canadiens won by the close margin of 10 to one over the visiting Pittsburgh Penguins to extend their opening night undefeated streak. To 14 wow. games at 10 0 and 4. Oh, that one's a nail biter right nuts. there at 10 to 1. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We've sat through one of those. A few. Yeah. yeah. All, all right, uh, uh, Ross, the universe, let's see what you got. <laughs> well, October 8th, 2002, the Boston Bruins named Joe Thornton as their team captain, the 17th in the team history. The other man with no age, Joe yep. Thornton. The, the ageless wonder. Who oh, signs yeah. his contracts on his tractor in Canada. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> on his John Deere. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to round this one out, and I'm taking it back to October 6, 1958. Former NHL goalie Sergei Milnikov, born in Chelyabinsky, Soviet Union. Now, why do I bring that up? That's what I was going to ask you. Milyanikov was the first Soviet-born goaltender to ever make the NHL and played in 1989 and 90 with the wow. Quebec Nordiques. Ooh. Nice. A little Quebecois action. Yeah, yeah. Uh, comrade coming over to Americas. That's right. Yeah. And- so I'll tell you what. I mean, that's that's breaking huge boundaries right there. I mean, 
especially in the times we were living in, uh, 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 like when you even think about it, I mean, the Stastny brothers, uh, two thirds of the Stastny brothers had to lit. Well, actually all three of them had to literally leave in the dead of night just to, just to find a way out of Slovakia. So that's how bad it was. And yeah. I'm kind of glad cause well, they're great hockey players. And oh, absolutely. I mean, they produced a, he produced a son. So that man is the one who blazed the way for Russian athletes to come over and play in uh play hockey in North America. That's a great one yeah, right there. I liked it. All right. All right. So beautiful hockey day in history. I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. So Jen, I don't know uh, if you know much about us, but we uh we are a podcast that loves to dig up all sorts of different aspects and and uh, just uh, new perspectives on ice hockey. So uh, we're going to get right into it. Um, well, let's start out with your background and uh, let's go from there. You know, how you started getting into skating and, you know, what really kind of lifted it off for you. Can you uh, kind of shed some light on the situation for uh, for us? So are you looking at like how I started skating, like me personally, or um, what got me into coaching or what would you like to know? Yeah, let's start- I'm an open book. Well, uh, let's start with, uh, you know, what got you into skating and I I know you have like a prominent career in, uh, figure skating. So let's, let's start how, you know, how that kind of, how you kind of busted into that. Okay. So, um, funny story. When I was five, my mom took me to the rink, signed me up for lessons. And back in the day, cartoons were only on Saturday mornings and, um, Mm -hmm. The skating lesson was the exact same time as Scooby Doo, which was like sacred. <laughs> and oh, I yeah. threw a fit. Oh. I was like, no, like this is only on one day a week. <laughs> and so um, my mom was like, she could not get me to the rink. Like I was, I was okay, but you know, she could not get me to the rink. So then, um, you know, we played around with skating a little bit. Um, go like skate on the creek. Go go to public skates, whatever. And then she tried again for real when I was seven. But she picked a Sunday afternoon when there were no chance of Scooby-Doo interruptions. <laughs> and um, the rest is history. I mean, like, I I distinctly remember going around the rink, and I was like, I wonder if I can do this without holding onto the wall, and I wonder if I can do it without falling down. And I made it, like, one lap. It took me, you know, a couple tries. I made it one lap, got it all the way around. I was like, yes, this is my sport! Like, I was so <laughs> excited. And, yeah, I was I was completely enamored with skating after that, so... Oh uh, well, you know, honestly, you're you're preaching to the choir about that Scooby Doo. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> uh, I was the same way, but I mean, I and and just just to go back to that, yeah, like making it around the rink one time. I was I I I can feel you there. It's just you know something a little new, and you finally make it all the way around. It's just beautiful, and kind of just uh, it sounds like it just breathe uh breathed a whole new like uh air of life into you. Oh, yeah, it was definitely it was a, a moment to remember forever, like just that feeling of like, oh, I did this. So that's incredible. And so uh, so where where does it go from there? Do you, you know, do you start taking lessons? Do you, um, was it uh, generally just figure skating for you at that point? Or- so basically it was um, I took the group lessons on a Sunday, I guess. And I think like the next day I ended up with my first private lessons. And um, I was fearless, completely fearless. In all hmm. honesty, I probably should have been a hockey player. Like, when <laughs> you know, I look at it now, I'm like, yeah, I totally should have <laughs> swapped my skates out when I was, like, nine. But um, I didn't. So I, you know, was very much, you know, in the figure skating realm uh, for my whole life, basically up until I started coaching. And, you know, that's when the whole hockey side opened up for me. And, you know, I'm, I'm internally grateful that that did. And, uh, uh, and well, yeah, uh, well, tell, tell us about, like, I mean, your career in figure skating, because uh, I know for a fact that you were actually, um, you were one of the first Americans to, uh, um, what, help me out here, Jen, uh, you, uh... <laughs> okay, tell you what, let me, I'll give you my little, my backstory, that'll make it easier, so, um, basically, the, what a lot of people know about me is my huge, um, background in figures so figures are the school figures like the circles on the ice that they used to do back in the olympics before somebody would be allowed to compete their actual program so they were making sure that the skater was technically sound 
before they would let them go out and compete. So nobody saw it. It was like behind the scenes. It was super boring. People hated it. When I was a kid, I hated it. I was like, when can I do jumps and spins? I hate doing the physical <laughs> things. Oh, yeah. And I, I was notorious as a little person to skate to the end of the rink to look at the teeny tiny clock to be like, I have eight minutes left of patch. And then I'd skate. So I was just wasting time. And I think it got so bad that my mom had my eyes checked because I, quote, quote, quote couldn't see the clock. <laughs> I, was just time. Like, I just wanted to jump and spin. And um, I was funny because later on, um, they abolished figures in 92. Well, I didn't get through all of my tests at that time. And I went back to it as an adult. So I started coaching, blah, 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 move fat, you know, fast forward. And I was like, you know, this whole figure thing is teaching edge control and balance and stability and mechanics. And why wouldn't I like get back into this? So I started doing it again in, gosh, what was that? 2006, 2007. I took my second figure test. There are eight total. So like the gold test is the, the eighth. And I was the first person in 12 years to pass that test in the world. Um, I passed it in December of 2019 yeah oh, wow. um yeah so basically you have like judges come out on the ice and they stand there and like watch you and it's terrifying oh <laughs> yeah they're, like, i imagine waiting, they're listening, like it's dead silent and they're waiting to hear you turn and if you're like Shh, sh, they're like oh that wasn't a clean turn you're like oh my God, shoot me just well intimidating <laughs> for sure oh it, it gives you like nerves of steel it's terrifying um, but then I was also, because I was getting into the figures, there was a movement to try to bring figures back. And, you know, figures are, are a tedious sport and a lot of people don't like them, don't understand them. So there's not, there's a following of it, but it's not big enough to like come back full time, you know, and go to the Olympics. People are trying to get it to be like its own little entity, which I think is fabulous. And there's a um, group for World Figure Championships. So not like the World Figure Skating, but World Figure Championships where you're on black ice and you draw circles with your feet and then they judge you. And um, I was asked to compete at that in 2015 for their inaugural thing. And I hadn't gotten all of my tests yet. And so they, like the lady who was running the whole thing called me up and was like, we really want you to compete. And I'm like, Oh my gosh. And I called my mom. I'll never forget this. I called her and I'm like, they asked me to compete. And she's like, well, what are you going to do? I'm like, mom, I could come in last. And she goes, but they called you. You have to go. Yeah, absolutely. I was like, you're okay if I get last? She goes, honey, I don't care. You just go, just pack your bags. When are you packing? (laughs) It's like, she was so excited. So, um, I went and, you know, I wasn't last, but you know, I was, I was, down towards the bottom, I mean, because I was, you know, <laughs> going up against people who had done this forever. And then, um, and that was 2015. And then 2016, I think I got seventh out of, like, everybody. So it was it was really neat. Like, I was super excited and uh, met some top people and Olympians. And, you know, it was this huge thing. But it was neat because it's the foundation of actual, like, figure skating and the information that you're getting on like where your weight is and the balance and the control and all of that correlated into not just my figure skaters, but my hockey players. And, you know, it was, it was really neat to see that open up the hockey side for me. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I like that, uh, that story too, about how it kind of revealed the fundamentals because when I was looking over your skating program I noticed as you advance through the levels that you offer you very much preach that before anything else happens we before we introduce the puck we're gonna make sure your edge work is good and I I personally loved that approach because my um, introduction to hockey was my mom uh, taking me to skating lessons with just this gigantic plastic Cooper helmet with my uh, name in big (laughs) letters on the front of it with a snowsuit and no stick and just um, like skating, figuring out what it was like to be on the ice, having fun, intentionally doing, you know, the Superman dive drills and, um, you know, 
introducing kind of like this gymnasium atmosphere, but on an ice rink for me and just introducing me to how much fun it was to feel um, skating and going fast on a different surface. And then it allowed me to, when I went into hockey, to kind of focus more on the, like the stick handling part of it at that point, because the skating for me was um, so easy at that point. So it gave me the ability to kind of like no longer worry about that and just do the, the stick handling and skills part of it. And, um, it's not like everyone does it that way. Some people are like, you want to play hockey, go ahead and play hockey. And they teach you everything at the same time. And, um, I'm not saying your programs don't do that at certain levels, but I also, uh, think what you're, you're teaching and also how you're structuring your program and also what you're talking about with your figure history really speaks to how like the fundamental edge work uh, really matters. And uh, I think that's great. Thank you. Well, and I, I am a huge advocate for hockey coaches because the way I look at it is a hockey coach's job is to teach hockey, right? Oh, and yeah. you know, if they have a whole team and somebody's struggling on a crossover, you know, it's really hard to give that one person that individual information that they need. Or, you know, if you've got like, you know, you need to teach a couple different plays or whatnot, you might not have enough time to do the skating, right? So that's why I try really hard to be like, listen, I am just one, one more person that's here to help you get better in hockey. Like I want the hockey coach to be able to teach you the hockey stuff. I want to teach you the skating stuff so that when you get there, you're like, no one can catch me. Like Mm. I I try really hard to make sure my kids are fast enough. They don't get hit. (laughs) That, yeah, that's and, and especially in this day's hockey, that's what it's all about, too, is you getting on those jets, eh? It is, yeah. I've had coaches tell me speed kills at all points of the game. As if you're fast and if your hands can keep up with your feet eventually, um, if you know what you're doing with your feet beforehand in a situation in the corner or in front of the net, how to position yourself with a loose puck or, you know, just going from transitions, you know, it's really important to be able to have that reaction time and know what to do with your edges for sure. I agree with that, yeah. What I was going to get to as well with, like, you teaching in that aspect, I know the need of my brothers. Their mom was a basically a skate instructor, and she taught them how to power skate, and that got them to how smooth, and they only just took a few strides, and they were yes. off. And it was just amazing to watch either Rob or Scott just skate on the ice mm-hmm. with such finesse. And they didn't even as most players that played with them just you know they were just like they were never tired they just knew how to skate right. and use their actual legs to benefit them basically mm-hmm. so they didn't get as fatigued and they weren't wearing themselves out mm-hmm. so that that's just awesome that you can just develop that skill as well that's what we called it back in my time too was uh power skating like oh we're going to power skating you know, or the Robbie Glanz power skating camp. I remember going to that. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember one time they're like, all right, you need to sk- skate from red line to red line on one skate only, transitioning, like using your edges, pumping your legs. And I was like, when would I ever do this? And I never really did in a game, but I was like, holy smokes, so much of your momentum of your body affects how you move on the ice. And that was the lesson that they were teaching us. And I was like damn like skating is like so efficient and you see guys in the league that are like so much better in the skating aspect comparatively to the other aspects of hockey that you need and you're like oh you're on the team because you can skate like the wind or um like your acceleration is second to none right like on a penalty kill that's huge or back checking yeah exactly so so yeah uh jen when did hockey really kind of become like apparent in your coaching like uh, well uh, a how'd you get started with coaching and how did hockey really kind of uh like hockey training and stuff like that come in come into the picture so um the reason that i started coaching is actually quite laughable um so when i was i think 17 i was at the rink and i'm like hey i'm gonna fill out an application i want to be a rink guard (laughs) And I filled out an application, and I wrote down what skating level I had. 
And I like dropped it off and I went to go out the door and this woman about broke her leg trying to get out of the office. She's like, do you want And I'm like, I'm 17. You trust me with small children? Like, are you serious? <laughs> and um, so basically they put me on basic skills classes and then it wasn't long after that that they had me teaching like one-on-one -on -one private lessons and birthday parties and whatnot. And I was kind of like, you know, in college and like, this is cool, whatever. It's a little extra money. And then it started hitting me how much I loved watching that little like aha moment like when a kid is struggling with something and then you just say it a little differently or you show them or you know because every kid learns differently so it's like you know back when we're growing up if you did it wrong the coach would just say it louder and you're like okay I heard you in English the first time I don't know but like my hearing is fine I don't understand <laughs> you know like do it this one okay um, but so for me, it was like, all right, well, I'm going to see it, say it, do it, draw it, whatever. One of these like multiple ways I try to explain it should connect. And if, you know, and I tell the kids, if it does not make sense, it is on me as the coach. I will figure out a way to make this make sense for you. And, um, and the kids really appreciate that because it's like, you know, yeah. they're not, you know, we're, and I tell them like, we're on the same team. Like I am, I am like your number one fan right here i want you to do well so you tell me what you need and i will make sure that happens oh yeah and that's great so yeah so i started um i was i think I, when it really clicked for me with like hockey is i was working i was doing learn to skate and you know like the little girls will be like oh yeah i want to be a figure skater and they you know want to get lessons or whatnot and you're like okay well i'll give you my card well then hockey parents would be like my kid wants to skate better and I was like, well, yeah, why wouldn't they want to skate? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes, absolutely. Let me give you my car, you know. And so then pretty soon it's, you know, word of mouth. It's like so-and-so's got this person teaching them, you know, hockey skating. And then the next person, then pretty soon, you know, your phone is ringing off the hook because you teach hockey players. And you're like, I don't really know what just happened, but okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm working really hard with, like, edge control and balance and, you know, I will never forget, I had an adult years ago. This is, like, one of my favorite stories. You know, like, when you accidentally stick your foot in your mouth, but it, it, it was okay because it works out. And, oh, yeah, you're, um, you're, you're preaching to the choir. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I had a adult, super sweet guy, signed on to do one-on-one -on -one lessons, and he wanted multiple lessons a week and, you know, wanted to be – a fast player i'm like all right i'm like how how long have you been skating he's like well i just started i'm like okay so i'm you know, working, on, <laughs> I'm working on balance right you know he's in like the adult hockey league and they need to be able to skate too right so i'm teaching him like balance and you know two foot glides and this and that and he's like well yeah but i want to do he's like i want to do like the hockey stuff like the turns and the and the, all this stuff and i looked at him and i don't know where this came from but i just go don't you want to learn how to skate first <laughs> and it and it dawned on me afterwards. I'm like, oh, I totally just burned this guy. Like, I just <laughs> and he was so sweet about it because he looked at me. He goes, you know, it's probably a really good idea. And I was like, oh. uh. I was like, I'm so fired. I'm so fired. You know? But he was, he was really, like, he became one of my favorites because he understood, like, in that accidental, you know, open, honest moment, he was like you know, she's right. You know, if I can't skate and I tell the kids all the time, if you can't get to the puck, no one's going to give it to you. Like, you know, little Johnny over here has the puck and he's racing down the ice and you're standing there and you can't skate. Johnny's going to take the puck straight to the net. He's no, not going to yeah. give it yeah. to you. He doesn't care. You're not <laughs> even going to be involved. You know, yeah. No, you're going to be standing there like, pass it. No, not going to pass it to you. Sorry. You know, Johnny wants the glory. Like, so it's, yeah. <laughs> so that's, um, that and then, of course, per usual, I dated a hockey player when I was, oh, God, I was early 20s, and he was the assistant for one of the hockey teams. And, of course, you know, when you get the assistant coach and the girlfriend's a figure skater, you it's kind of like a, a two-for-one deal where you get, like, the figure skating coach comes in and helps the team. And mm -hmm. I really, like, I think that was a huge thing for me because – I, I was out of my comfort zone. I was out of my element, but the kids, as much as, you know, the high school boys like to give you, you know, kind of a run for your money. These kids started asking me questions like, okay, this guy was here at such and such. And, you know, and I don't know any of the plays because 
figure skater. And they're like, he was here and I was in the defense zone and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, just draw it on the ice for me. Tell me, where were you? And he's like, this guy went this way. What do I do? And I'm like, oh, well, if you had done this and this and this. And then they started realizing that there was like valuable information there. And they would come to me like every week. They'd be like, this happened in a game. This happened in a game. Tell me how to make this not happen. And I'm like, yeah, absolutely. And I, I love that. I mean, that was, that probably was another one of the big pivotal moments for me because I, I can't, I mean, as much as I didn't like the guy after dating him, that was such a great thing for me because that started to like really solidify the whole teaching hockey skating skills. So, right. Yeah. Same time you develop that awareness That's of what, what you are in the say. eyes yeah. compared to where that person is and getting from point A to point B as well. Yeah, like a, like a total cross prom- promotion of, of like uh, almost like, you know, uh, hockey theory and, and like, you know, figure theory where you can you really do have that kind of like experience and knowledge where, you know, where you can actually talk to hockey players and figure uh, figure skaters, too, which which is huge. I mean, I, I mean, with a I mean, yeah, with a figure like a skating instructor. To be able to like uh, like really talk the game and know the game and, and uh, like I, you know that's huge and I I gotta say yeah that's got to be a huge push for you. I will say I am definitely not a hockey player. Like I I love how kids will ask me like oh yeah Jen how long did you play? I'm like are you kidding me? I don't play like I will t- I'll take hockey sticks into the rink. Okay, so like during COVID. We were trying to do, like, the whole, like, flip the puck on the stick, you know, Zoom meetings, whatever. And so I was like, I'll do the challenges with the kids. I'm like, I'm trying to flip it. I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm trying, right? <laughs> I can skate. I can outskate you any day of the week. But I cannot shoot to save my life. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's all right. I mean, you just blow by him. That's all you got to do, really. Like, my... my... Well, like... Um, my coach always said, especially on like breakaways and stuff, as long as you just like uh, win as fast as you possibly could, you didn't even give the, the goalie enough time to actually really think. So just as long as you barreled towards him, you got oh, the yeah. upper hand. So yeah. hell, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like the deer in the headlights. Like if you're standing there as a goalie and you see a freight train coming at you, you're like, uh, uh, uh crap, and it's here. You know, it's. <laughs> Oh yeah, uh, so yeah, I've always I've always taken that to heart. So I mean, if you can blow by him, who cares about stick handling? <laughs> hey Jen, I have a question for you. From hanging out, um, you know, in the figure world, and then uh, also being exposed to the hockey scene, and then offering classes with kids that you know are teaching uh, skills that are more general. Do you ever have students of yours that are kind of starting off in one discipline and then we'll transition to the other so um another funny story um apparently i'm just full of funny stories today that's what we love (laughs) um keeps it entertaining right oh totally so if you i am assuming you've noticed that i've got like three assistant coaches right Mm -hmm. Um, yeah yeah so those guys um peter Alex and Austin have skated with me for over 10 years, right? Oh, jeez. And, yeah, so they – that's the really nice thing about, like, bringing those guys on is when I'm working at one end of the rink with, like, you know, drawing something or whatever because I'm big on doodling all over the ice and I'm notorious with drawing everywhere. I can literally hear myself with something I said seven years ago coming out of one of their mouths while they're talking to the kids. And I'm like, oh, this is why we're having them standing here. This is amazing. Because they listened to everything, and then they, you know, told the kids the exact same thing that I would have been saying if I was standing down there. So, um, funny part about it is when I would have, you know, a, um, and I did this multiple times, but um, one really, it really struck a chord with the one. I get a hockey player, hockey player starts to figure out edges, hockey player gets pretty good at edges, and all of a sudden Miss Jen goes, so you're taking a hockey lesson one day a week? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, I will give you a free figure skating lesson and get you some skates. And then you can skate two days a week with me. And they're like, but I said, so you wear hockey skates one day. We work with, you know, hockey, hockey skating skills. And then I'll also teach you to like jump and spin. 
one of the kids, um, and I've had a couple crossover where they do both. One of the kids did an amazing job. Um, Austin, actually, I had him uh, figure skating. He went all the way up to like double flips. And, wow. um, and now it's not like end over end. It's like, you know, vertical. So it's not like the cool back flips you're seeing. It's not that kind of flip. But so he was doing double jumps and um, doing pairs and like, you know, all that fun stuff. But he was also playing hockey. So he got a lot of extra information from the figure skating side as well. Um, so, I mean, he's, I love that about him that he was able to do both. So, um, so yeah. And <laughs> funny, funny part about that is when you've got like a hockey player on the ice, the figure skaters don't really pay attention because it's a hockey player, right? The minute that kid switched into figure skates, all the girls were like, oh, there's like this hot guy on the ice. And I'm like, dude, he's been here for six years. Where have you been? Well, he's in figure skates. I'm like, right? It's the same kid. Well, but he's different now. I'm like, no, he's not. Well, all the figure skaters wanted him to, you know, do pairs, right? Because it's very hard to find a male figure skater. You know, they're not as easy to come by. Right. And, you know, so you get one and everyone's like, oh, pairs. <laughs> so yeah, it was funny. Oh man, that kid's that kid's stock just rose a hundred percent. Oh, I know, I know. Uh, like, oh, who's that guy? It's the same kid I've been working with every you know Sunday morning for the last six years. Nothing has changed other than his toe pick on the front. <laughs> I think that speaks volumes to what you're doing, actually, just because you know you're taking these these hockey players who have other skills like figure skating and they're not only just you know trying to master hockey but you have people who are trying to master the art of just skating itself no matter if it's in figure skates or hockey skates so i think that kind of speaks volumes to what you're doing right now in terms of just being knowledgeable about skating itself if you have people who are good in both skates and figure skates you know you're giving yourself a nice leverage there and you have a nice basis to learn from well, and the, the other nice thing about that is if you think about, you know, the, the kids like, so Peter and Alex, uh, Peter and Alex, Peter and Austin both had tried figure skating. And Peter, Alex, and Austin had the information from me from skating itself, you know, like, you know, where the weight is on your blade and the physics of skating and, you know, balance and organizing your body in a proper way to be efficient. When those kids decide to start coaching, the ones that have done figure skating and hockey are more valuable in the sense that they can teach both figure skating and hockey classes. And then if you have a hockey skating coach, an uh, intro, you know, basic skills, whatever, that person that knows all of the balance, et cetera, you know, and getting the information that, you know, you might not have gotten unless you had a coach who had been teaching 20 some odd years. If you're getting that information from like a younger person, Little people like to look up to somebody who's like 15, 16, 20, and they're like, oh, I want to skate like so-and-so. So that's that was huge for those guys when they broke into like the whole coaching thing is they were very um, marketable for. Oh, and extremely well-versed in, in a lot of dis different disciplines of skating, which is, that's huge. And then that's Definitely. great, which... It, it, in the end really does expand i mean just the art of skating just like kind of like how bryce elaborate bryce and you uh, elaborated on it's it's i mean yeah there's there's some things that you can get by you know just kind of learning through a hockey way of skating or a, you know a figure way of skating but as soon as you kind of unlock both those talents it's like it's it uh after that it, it kind of sends you more into the stratosphere rather than just like stay like plateauing at some point the younger ones that are like in middle school or high school or whatever and they're trying to figure out how to talk to a girl because you know you get those questions too sometimes oh, during jeepers. oh yeah what am i supposed to do on a date and i'm like uh how I thought, old are you? take our ice skating. I thought I thought we were talking about That's ice. Exactly yeah, it. there you go. <laughs> That's exactly it. And I tell them, I said, this is something that you're strong at, right? You're great at skating. You're, you're very stable. You're gonna teach them something, so it's something you're good at. So you're gonna be in a good light, and it's a slippery surface. If there's anything that goes wrong, you're gonna catch her, and you look like a hero. And they're like. Oh, that's brilliant. I'm like, okay, have fun. Be careful. And make sure you get popcorn. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that's incredible. Beautiful beauty dating advice. Like, I, that, <laughs> I, I'll tell you what, man. It, if if uh, if it was 12 year old me again, I'd listen to that all day long. If you don't sweep her off her feet, the ice will. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> 
Oh, that's incredible. So, yeah. Jed, let me ask you something real quick, just about the edge work. So, we talked about figure skating, and you see figure skaters using their edges inside and out all different ways. How does that go into hockey? How does that, those ed, edge lessons you teach, how do those lessons uh, contribute to hockey? Okay, so one of my favorite tools, um, other than being able to, like, so reading the ice, um, and that comes from figures where, like, you look at the ice and you can see an immediate response of what your body did. So, like, some of the kids will be like, you know, I tell them, you know, the ice is always going to tell me what you did. So if we look over here, you know, your stride was really wide and you have prints to show to prove, right? And the kids are like, well, the ice is a tattletale. I'm like, well, this is true, but the ice is telling me that your feet were too wide. Do you mark those then, edges down and where they were skating or how does that work and showing them so how, like, where they were? Right. When you have clean ice, you're able to see like where, so when they're practicing on their own, if they can see where their foot's going down, they can like sort of self-correct, which is the name of the game. You know, when you're skating on your own, being able to correct it yourself is huge, right? Oh, yeah. So you've got being able to see it on the ice and, and then listening is another huge one where um, I have them listen to the sound their skate is making. So one of my favorite things is pushing without pushing. And that's huge because, you know, normally you're, you tell a kid to push, you know, push onto your inside edge or push onto an outside edge or whatever. And the kid does one push. Now, if you're doing an inside edge or even an outside edge and at the halfway mark around that circle, you bend your knees and you press the, if you're going forward, you press the back of your blade into the ice, you will automatically increase your speed. I literally just second pushed without putting my other foot down. Now, my third thing that I love using is a stopwatch. I can show a kid, like, if I'm doing that edge thing, and I say, all right, you're going to stand here, and you're going to do a normal push, and then you're going to get to here, and you're going to stop, and I'll time them. And I'm like, this is how fast you were. Okay, now I want you to do it again, and I'm going to show you where you're going to bend your knee and accelerate out. And we do it a couple times so that they're confident, right? And then I time them again. Well, look at that. Your time is faster. Right. Or if I say, OK, I want to work on your your stride. OK, so I will have the kids show me, you know, this is the stride that I do or this is my quick start or whatever. One of my favorite things that I see all the time is a kid will start on the line to do a quick start to sprint sideways and they do this crossover and then they take off. Yeah. And when I first started, when I first started coaching, I saw all the hockey coaches do it and I was like, well, clearly this is the way to do it. And I started teaching that, right? So that's the way I did it. And finally, you know, I started thinking about it and I'm like, why would I start out sideways if I want to go forward? And I start, you know, I'll kind of piece things together and then it was always Peter, Alex and Austin and I'd be like, "Hey, I want you to be a guinea pig today. We're going to try something." I'm like, "Here we go again." <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, "We're going to try this." And so, and they, to this day, I do this to, you know, to them all the time where I'm like, I thought of such and such. You're like, oh God, you know, <laughs> like, uh, here we go again. Was, yeah, here we go again. And, um, I love the fact that I, I figured out like if I had, and I'll tell every kid, like your hockey coach is not wrong the way they're telling you to do stuff. I'm going to tell you that there are a multitudes of ways to do things. So like if you went to a water balloon fight and you know, you had 15 water balloons, you're feeling pretty good. The other kid has 15 water balloons, a super soaker, a water cannon, a garden hose. They have an advantage because they have all these other things that they can use. You just have 15 water balloons. So it's like there's a time and a place for everything. Like, do you need to accelerate going into a tight turn? Sure. Do you need to stop to turn around into a tight turn? Entirely possible. Am I going to tell you one way is right and one way is wrong? No, it depends on the situation. It depends on the kid. It depends on their body structure. Whatever works for that kid in that moment is the way that it's supposed to be. And, you know, I love taking the, uh, going back to the starting sideways, I love taking a kid, timing them, and then I show them their time. And I, like, we'll do it twice, and I'll write it down. And then I'm like, I want you to try it this way, and we'll change their steps and you know, make it narrow, and I'm totally talking with my hands like you can see me, and then um, I'll have them do the stop, and we'll do it twice, and I'll show them the times, and it's like, I don't think it's ever been slower sideways, or faster sideways, like it's, 
the kids look at it and they're like, oh my God, I just took like a bunch of time off. And I said, well, think about it. If you're next to Johnny and Johnny's starting out sideways and you're starting out forwards, they're like, I'm going to get there faster. I'm like, yes. And who do we want to be faster? Like me. I'm like, yes, that is why we do this. <laughs> and that's like instant progress, instant gratification right there. The fact that they're seeing this time change instantaneously is really important. Well, and that's one of my favorite tools because if you get a kid who doesn't completely believe in what's going on, you know, there are the kids that are like, Jen is the way to go. Jen is teaching edges. Jen is doing a lot with hockey. I want a lesson with Jen. Those are great kids, right? I love those kids. But then there are also the kids where the parents are like, Jen is great. Jen's working with hockey players. Jen's going to give you a lesson. And the kid's like, I don't know. She's got white skates and toe picks. Mm. You know, and you take that kid out and they have a lesson and they're like not real sure about you and they're kind of like halfway trying. When you can start breaking through and showing them immediately that something is changing. Because even if, you know, you have like three lessons, you might not feel it, but it's going to change on the ice. Well, if you can see it immediately, that kid's like, oh, wait a second. I'm bought into what you're teaching me. Yeah, wait, wait, what about, could we try it this way? Well, how about... And then they're starting to become engaged in that lesson where they're like, okay, hang on, let, let's stop for a second. What if I did this? And then all of a sudden you have that, that dialogue between you and that kid, and that kid's like, yeah, you are definitely on my team with me. Yes, we. this is working. So, And I love those because you get that breakthrough moment. And you're- yeah, and I, th- I think that's really huge with a lot of kids too because, you know, when, um, you know, kids, they don't uh, they don't normally have like a very, you know, open-minded view of a lot of things is like it dur- in like a younger age just kind of like you're almost taught one way and you're like well that's obviously the way to do it but i mean uh it sounds like you've got a very open-minded approach to it and 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 the fact is is that you have a very good way of making them a little more open-minded to different aspects as well which is huge because well like I know with skating, uh, you know, you uh, you can get in, uh, get yourself into, you know, like a habitual kind of uh, re- uh, like habitual, well, just habits, basically, that yeah. you kind of get yeah. stuck yeah. in. And then, yeah, and then mm-hmm. it's stuck so, m- right. yeah, so. <laughs> and it's so much harder to break that. But when you actually have this really awesome way of, you know, kind of not really forcing it upon him, but just, you know, just actually, you know, just like, it's just like, well, here it is, you know, I mean, this is, um, you changed one little thing and look at where you're at now, you know, it's like, you're not really hammering it in, you know, you're just kind of like laying it on like a uh, stick of butter, you know, on a, on a piece of bread. Oh, smooth. Well, one of the, yeah, very smooth. One of the, uh, the things that I think people don't realize is kids are a lot smarter than we give them credit for, right? You know, they're, they're, they're smart. And it's like you get a kid who's talking with their hockey coach and the hockey coach is saying one thing. And then like they go to um, a clinic somewhere and the clinic says something and that, you know, and they're getting all the stuff thrown at, them, right? If somebody tells a kid, I need you to do this. And the kid, you know, I always tell everyone, I'm like, you have a 10 scale, you know, one is, you know, you're barely trying, and 10 is you're trying so hard you're practically bleeding. You know, like, I don't want to see anything less than a 7. Or, you know, one is super is super slow, like painfully slow, and 10 is supersonic fast. I want to see it at, like, a 4 where we're really building it up, and then we can work on the mechanics and then go faster. It's like when you tell a kid, I want you to do, you know, bend your knees. A kid's like, okay, they'll give you, they'll maybe try it like a 4 or a 5. Sometimes there's some kids that are just completely golden and gifted and they'll do anything. But a lot of kids are like, uh, I'll sort of try it and see if it works. If you tell a kid, I want you to bend your knees here, put the weight on the back of the blade here. This is why we're doing it because you're going to accelerate through the turn and you're going to beat Johnny getting around that corner. When they get that information and they understand the how, the when, and the why, it starts to connect where they're like, well, yeah, yeah, okay. And then once they do it and they see that it worked and they feel it, then they're like, tell me something else. And I'm like, okay, cool, you know. And and that's when the kid has opened up to skating skills are important for hockey. And that's the name of the game. 
So, Jen, do you allow kids who are less experienced and you allow them to team up with these experienced kids, do you see that there's a bridge between um, competition there? As far as, like, a bridge between competition between, like, the higher kids and the lower kids? Yes, you're bridging that gap between these maybe more non-athletic kids compared to the athletic kids who so are on the ice. I'm, I'm trying to give everybody the best information that they have for what they're dealing with. So, like, you know, I could have a kid who's got more talent in their pinky than I do in my entire body. And I can have a kid who has an entire body of no talent, but they have that drive and they want it. I am going to do whatever I can to make sure both kids are going to get all the information that they need to be the best possible kid they can. Is that kind of where you were, what you were asking? Exactly, about? exactly. It's, you know, understanding that you're at one level and this kid's at another level. How can I be at his level and work together at the same time to get to that point that well, we're both at? It's, yeah, it's basically, it depends on, you know, how hard are you willing to work? If you, okay, so in figure skating, there are kids that are jumpers and there are kids that are spinners. Okay, so I was a kid that could spin. I could spin. I love to spin. You don't usually fall down when you spin. Pretty easy for me. I would have trouble jumping, but I wanted to jump like it was nobody's business, and I would throw myself in the air, and I would fall out of the sky, you know, like it was, it was rough, but, which is why I think I could have been, you know, pretty good at hockey, because yeah. I did. no fear, right? Oh, so, yeah. But then you've, got, then you've got other kids who are great at jumping, and they might have trouble spinning. You have to work to try to connect those things together, where it's like, okay, your spins are amazing, you're going to have to put more work into this jump. Right, and that you know you keep working at it until the jump is the same level as the spin. And for you know any skater, you know hockey or figure, it's like you've got to look at okay, Johnny over there is really talented and Johnny's really good, or you know Johnny might not be as talented, but Johnny's working his tail off. It just depends on what that kid has, and it's like, well, okay, you want to be like Johnny, but Johnny's really talented. How hard are you willing to work? How much time are you going to put in? If Johnny's putting in 10 hours a week of practice, put in 15. There's nothing wrong with putting in 15. If you put in five and you expect to be better than Johnny, it's not going to work. You know, and, and it's having them be honest with themselves, too, because, you know, no one's going to wake up and get a gold medal for doing nothing. And, you know, we have to get that through their heads. Like, there is time and effort and energy to get the outcome you want. You know, it doesn't it doesn't just happen overnight. Like, you got to put in that effort, so... Well, and also going back to, like, as you guys were saying, like, information, like, with the skating and everything, I think that from what you teach, it sounds like, that that kind of goes both ways, if you think about it, boys. And, I mean, it's, they can learn and pick up stuff that other players do on the ice, so that makes them a better competitor against the other team and or the other person because they can also notice certain faults with certain things you get what i'm saying yeah one one of my one of my favorite things about like the skate with jen sessions and um like my little my little groups is i put you know peter alex and austin out there and you know i'll have the kids go through learn a drill you know edges whatever um a rocker mohawk transition whatnot and then we do it with the puck and then we do it with speed and then and then i send them out there and they get chased by one of my assistants well if you're a six-year-old and you're being chased by a 19 year old number one the kids smile which i think is hysterical they're like yeah i'm getting chased i'm like i would probably be my pants <laughs> oh my god <laughs> yeah, this big guy is chasing me, smiling. But then they're also getting immediate response of, I'm doing it this way. I'm going to protect the puck this way. This guy is here. He's trying to get around me. It's in a safe space. It's in, you know, a skate with Jen confined area. It's not in a game because, you know, you can learn something super cool and, and whatever. And to try to throw something into a game, if you haven't practiced it, you know, really practice it kind of like under pressure, it's hard to do and feel like confident that it's going to work, which is why, you know, when you're being chased around by like a 20 year old or a 19 year old or whatever, you're sitting there going, okay, I'm 10 and a 20 year old's chasing me, which means an 11 year old is no big deal. 
And then that gives them that confidence they need when they go out in their next game. So, you know, I love watching them battle it out, and especially the smiles. The smiles are great, so. Oh, that's huge. I mean, and, and I mean, that's dealing a lot with, like, you know, the mental aspect of learning how to skate, and, and that's huge. It just is just as big as the physical aspect as well so that's really cool well thank you i know that i'm faster if i don't start sideways but i also know on face-offs i have to line up sideways and sometimes as a winger uh my assignment is to get to the point as quickly as possible so i'm sure in your lessons you have to kind of explain to them like i understand this is the fastest way from a to b but I also understand that in a game, you have not the ability to really do this this way. So let me teach you these things and also teach you when you should be applying those things. And uh, I just wondered if you could explain how that goes into your teachings as well. One of the days over the summer <clears throat> when we were doing the Skate with Jen clinics, I actually did a... I did three different ways to do a quick start. And I said, so we're going to have our normal one where you're, you know, stepping out like normal, which you've all seen it drawn this way. I'm like, now we're going to do one where it's super, super long. Like you're jumping, like you're a gazelle. You're jumping, you know, two feet in front of where you feel like you're supposed to. And then we're going to do one where you're running on your toes. And I said, everybody is going to have like a first and second that they like, and they're going to hate the third way. Every single person is probably going to be different. And so we, you know, we had a smaller group and I was really thankful for that, that we were able to take the time to show them, you know, in the different scenarios, like, you know, how they're going to be faster this way versus that way. And some kids had really long legs and they were able to do like that gazelle start. Other kids had like a lot of power in their legs and they were ready to go with the, uh, the running on their toes. And I said, you know, and it's all going to depend on what you need at that moment. But if you know three different ways to start it, then you have three more options than if you only know one way to start it. So it's, it all depends on what they need at that moment. It's just giving them more stuff to work with. Nice. So one of the things I've noticed is a lot of times I ask a kid to do a, um, you know, when I get a kid for the first time, I'll be like, well, I want to see you start from here and skate, you know, all the way down. And I'll get a kind of a hybrid between a quick start and a power stride. And I'm like, okay, well, you could actually separate that into two parts. So you could have like a long power stride where you're really stepping, you know, really far in front of your body and using your body weight and your lean and your mechanics to give you that power and efficiency. And then you can have a quick start where you're using a lot of energy really, really fast up at the beginning to get you going. And I said, I want you to look at it from a car aspect. If you start out like a Ferrari, it's going to take a lot of energy, but you're going to go right away. Mm -hmm. But then once you're going... If you want to turn into a Tesla, you're still fast, but you're efficient. So we want to start as a Ferrari and turn into a Tesla. And, you know, it's funny because, you know, the kids who are starting to get into cars are like, yeah, you know, they get it. They get it so. But that, that car analogy is what was coming into my mind, too, when you were talking about turning. Because it's, it's, it's the same thing with car racing. You need to know when in a turn to decelerate and then accelerate through the turn yes, and keep your momentum it, yeah. and transfer your energy from the speed to the grip of the tire, just like you would your edges in your skate. So it is. I, like I saw that. Austin in his, his, uh, his V start right there and insane quickness he, from red line to blue line and three strides. It's amazing to see. It's pretty awesome to watch that. They're, they're so much fun to watch. Like I love, I love watching my, my guys. Like it's a highlight of my day to throw stuff at them at like the end of a session and be like, all right, real quick, try this. And they're like, you know, and they try it, you know, cause they have to have fun too. Right. But, Oh yeah. I also like how your groups are of like such a wide age group because it's, it was always more like a privilege when you got the hockey coach that got one of their alumni to come back and hang out at one practice. And then there'd be a scrimmage at the end for five minutes where it was like the coaches versus the entire kids team. And it was like, try to get the puck off of, you know, the kid that's in, you know, triple a right now, that's not coaching with so-and-so anymore. And you've got these guys that are um, able to be your coaches, but also you have different age groups. So, 
I always like being able to be like, oh, yeah, I stole the puck from that kid that one time who was five years older than me and that yeah. thing that we were doing. And and I I picked up on that when you were talking about giving them that confidence. It's like, oh, if I can do that to someone five years older than me, then in the real game, it's no big deal. And I'm gonna wreck 100% stuff. <laughs> agree with that because uh, it was super cool to be able to like play among those older guys and girls that normally you don't get that opportunity it's just not part of a a hockey team dynamic usually yeah but in this power skating and and your your uh lessons like that opportunity exists but you take advantage of it and i think that's great i am sure i annoyed the daylights out of the older kids i'd be like hey hey so and so show me a camel spin and they're like oh god this little kid again and they'd go out and do a camel spin how'd you do that and then they're like okay well i did blah 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 and so it was, you know, you have that moment where you're you're talking to a big kid. The big kid is actually, like, talking to you, right? That's huge. They taught you something, and you're like, I mean, it's just like somebody's dropping diamonds in front of you. You're like, yes, tell me everything you know. Yeah, you got First, the, definitely. You go, you, yeah, then you go to, like, a regular coach, and you're kind of like, oh, this is the coach. The coach is supposed to tell me stuff, whatever. But for whatever reason listening to the exact same information coming from a 15 year old who has blue eyeliner on is just way cooler to me. So it was like, I had to listen to that. I was like, I need to know everything, you know, and it was being able to create that situation, you know, minus the blue eyeliner clearly, but like (laughs) Alex and Austin Peter out there. um, And they're able to do the exact same information but also with like that hockey background where it's like, okay, the, you know, one of the things I'm notorious for is I will draw a crazy line and my crazy line is like all sorts of weird turns, twists, you know, transitions, speed stops, whatever. And then I'll put a net at the end because the kids were finally telling me like, Jen, you really ought to let them take a puck through and then put, and I fought It's it the least you could do, Jen. It's the least yeah, you could do. Please, you have to let them shoot at the end. <laughs> Finally, you know, I would put a net out there, and it was um, it was interesting watching, you know, the way they're going through with it and trying to get them to understand why they were doing it. And then, you know, you get that person chasing you, and it just becomes this whole new this this thing where they get to try it. You know, I just I I love the that whole aspect. But yeah. So as a hockey player. Um, beginner or advanced, what are the top three lessons that you offer that would probably give hockey players the most beneficial skill set? So I'm going to say it's not necessarily the type of lesson, but it's the um, amount of times that you see that person. So one of the things that I'm I'm really big on, obviously, are edges and trying to get that balance. So like if I have a kid who's only going to take one lesson from me, I'm going to be like, listen, tell me exactly what you want so I can tailor this to exactly what you're looking for, right? You know, hey, I want to be better and faster at my tight turns. Okay, I will work on tight turns. You know, or the parent's like, my kid needs to do backward crossovers. Cool, we're going to do backward crossovers, you know, maybe for like 30 minutes. They're going to hate me, but that's fine. But the big thing for me is a lot of times you'll get a kid who's like, and I saw this all the time, they go off for a week camp and, you know, summer, and they come back and they've got all this information and their eyes are all shiny and they're all excited. And every bit of information that kid got during, like, summer camp dies when they come back because the coach wasn't there or they weren't seeing the repetition of it for, like, the next couple of weeks, which is why, for me, I tell everybody, like, you know, if you, you want me to come out for a team practice, it's worthless, basically, if you do one team practice. You need, like, three in a row where we're still building on the same thing, and then they start feeling that it's getting better. My big thing is I want it to be a continual, like, you know, you're working each week, you know, maybe something different, but you're still getting those skating skills in. So it's – I don't know if there's really one specific thing per, you know, the age levels. I think balance – and agility and efficiency and being able to take those turns and knowing when to push. So like on the uh, turning a corner, like you were saying on a car and like when to accelerate. One of my big things is why would you push twice in a tight turn if you can push once at the end and be faster? You know, why would you skate in super hard, stop yourself, 
survive that turn and then push, you know, and you want to push on the exit rather than like slamming on the brakes, like use that speed going into it, survive it, and then ex accelerate on the way out. Yeah. It's just, it's all about how to present it to that kid. What you tend to preach is uh, confidence as well and confidence in knowing that it's, it's okay not to stop, you know? And I think uh, that's where maybe some, some kind of, you know, uh, just, you know, summer camps kind of, really uh fail to like build at the very end because you know you've got only so little time to you know build up these skills and stuff yet um it uh, it kind of it doesn't really leave a lot of time like individual sessions like you know almost every week for you know however long like how you guys do it like to actually really uh, for someone to actually see that in a kid where like yeah you maybe didn't have the confidence to get going but now we can work on that and you know change it and i i tell coaches all the time like if you want us to come out for for your teams you can come out too i would love for you to be able to say exactly what i'm saying to the kids later because then that's just you know information and that's that's great you know throw that stuff around so like if i'm telling you one thing and you can tell, tell that kid the rest of the season the same thing, I don't need to be there. That's great. Oh, yeah. And you know, if, if you've got kids going to camps, nothing against camps. I just I want the kids to be able to take all that information that they were so jazzed about and be able to see it continuing on. And, you know, a lot of times you don't get that. And that's, you know, where we need to change the dialogue. It's where we're, you know, everybody is on the same team. Everybody needs to get the same information. And all of the information is good. Not one way is better than the other. It's, you know, we're all working. We're all on the same team. We all want great skaters. So. Oh, that's you know. beautiful. That is awesome. <laughs> oh, hey. Oh, well, yeah. Definitely. Hey. And once again, to go to the more you know, like, that makes, like, seriously, you a better skater just to be a multifaceted and just have certain ways to skin that cat, quote unquote, as we say on my job sites. But All the I tools mean, in your bag you can. Yeah, right? It it's, just makes you a better player and a more cognizant play person on the ice. A versatile can, player goes a long and, way. Yeah, and versatile, because you can either make yourself better with skating or you can read what other people are doing as well because you no, i'm serious like the way that they're skating you can be like oh they're gonna do this in the corners while well, i got them beat by a couple strides because the anticipation I know what factor gonna do. is there yeah oh yeah and just not not to mention just you know you're always battling in the corner so now you have better balance on your skates because you understand skating you know Going and, into the corner, accelerating. Uh, accelerating I can, I can give that pass to that person and get it back because I know they're skating right so that when I pass it to them, it's not like the puck hitting their stick is going to cause so much added weight one side to them that it unbalances them and they like fly off the puck because of it either. And I do want to bring this up. Um, uh, there, uh, you know, I think um, a few years, four or five, six, four or five years back, uh, there was a, uh, you know, um, a journeyman kind of, you know, bruiser in the league that uh, had had been asked what his uh, most difficult fight was. And he said Sidney Crosby, actually. And the reason why is because he was such a good skater and so well balanced on his skates. It was almost impossible to get him uh, offset. Oh, yeah. You know, like and wobbling and to, to where you, you could actually, you know, like land uh, some pretty good blows. And, you know, then like as I think we've all seen in hockey fights is that uh, the big the big determining factor is the balance. Oh, yeah. You know, and, and the fact that Sidney Crosby was such a good and is still such a good skater that has a lot to do with it. So, I mean, even if you're going to try to go, go into the league and goon it up. You still got to be a good skater. You got to be a good skater. Yeah. Short bulldog like Marc Messier. Well, and correct me if I'm wrong, everybody. Uh, like, wasn't Ty You're Domi... You're wrong. No, okay. I'm just kidding. Oh, easy. But wasn't Ty Domi... Didn't he usually do, like, that Tasmanian devil spin where it was just, like, him and the guy, and he'd just start just landing blows on the guy? Just up, down, left, right? Because he was that much better of a skater than most of those guys. Yeah. And he could control the whole entire fight. And that's, like, and you're so right with that, Cody. Like, yeah, just it's thinking huge. back on that, that's so big. 
So, I mean, yeah, kids, even if you want to gun it up, learn how to skate, eh? <laughs> I mean, the game is becoming, not that it wasn't a skating game before, but it's definitely getting, you know, you've got more skating coaches getting involved. You've got more people understanding how important skating is to hockey. And, you know, you're seeing now, like, you know, one kid makes it on a team because that kid can skate. You know, and that's, oh yeah, like I said, the coach's job is not to teach you skating. The coach's job is to teach you hockey. You should be able to skate when you get there. And that's, you know, that's where we come in as skating coaches is to help, you know, bridge that gap. So. Oh, yeah. And just like you said, I mean, uh, this the the NHL that we play now, I mean, I mean, even in college, AHL, just like lower tiers. It is all about skating now. The speed is like the most deadly asset you could have in today's game. So Easily. speed kills. You're essentially asked to do everything, but at a faster pace now. So truly. Yeah. And I tell the kids when we're working, like the little tiny ones where I was like, we're working on backwards and they'll be like, I don't really want to go backwards. I'm like, Oh, I get it. I totally get that. You don't want to go backwards, but I'm going to tell you why we're going to do it. So if you can go forwards and everybody else on the team can go forwards, and the coach is going to have to make a cut and, you know, take somebody off the team. If you can go backwards and nobody else can, you're immediately more interesting to that coach because you can play both forwards and backwards. And the kids are like, oh, oh. And I'm like, yes, this is basically trying to keep you on a team by making you go forwards and backwards. They're like, Oh my gosh, you are actually speak like you are speaking to the choir because back when I started learning to skate, like skating backwards was just the worst thing for me. That and stopping left left side, but uh, like uh, uh, skating backwards was just like I always hated doing it. I I never liked doing it. But when I really started to actually uh, learn how to skate backwards and skate well backwards. I, 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 it just like, it was like a a light bulb went on. It's like, my game has improved so much more because I now know how to skate backwards well and be able to, uh, you know, balance and and make transitions backwards. And my game improved a hundred percent just because of that. So, uh, you know, that really, that really strikes a chord with me for sure. And a lot of that was probably confidence because you were probably lacking a little confidence because you knew you didn't want to get in a situation where you had to go backwards. Well, oh, then yeah. if you had going backwards, going forwards, and then creating that confidence right there, that's huge for you. For any little person trying to figure out how to skate, if they can get confidence and go forwards and backwards, I mean, that's the... Huge. And, Absolutely. you know, just to add to that, the, the game of hockey increases your, like your your love for the game increases because if you realize that skating forwards and backwards but also your edge work now gives you the opportunity to never take your uh eyes off of the play instead of being like oh crap i just missed it step 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 turn a corner now i need to look oh the play's already behind me oh crap like it beauty play by play it it really like in adds to the enjoyment of the game because oh, then you're not always w- literally one step behind yeah so yeah, exactly um, it's it's fundamentals but it also uh, is critical to in my opinion um your advancement in enjoying the game as well one other thing to think about though with that is like if you're if you're looking at it from not just the enjoying the game part but once you fight through something that you're uncomfortable with and then you have it and you own it, that's also huge. Like, because then there's a confidence from, like, you fought through something that didn't work. But, like, if you're, you know, I can only, I had a kid tell me that they only needed to stop with their right foot because hockey players don't stop with their left foot. And I was like, really? Oh, you know, where did yeah, that come you know, from? <laughs> where did that right? come from? And I'm looking at this kid, I was like, well, just for fun's sake, why don't we do both? And, you know, the dad was like, oh my God, I'm so embarrassed. You know? <laughs> I told the kid, I said, what if you have to stop on the left side? You know, what if you, you're going to turn all the way around? You're going to be forced in situations. Well, you're going right, to have to do you know, it. You're going to have to. So it's like you're, you're starting where like, okay, I've got, you know, 85% confidence start, stopping with my right foot. And I'm at 12 with my left foot. And right. And then you keep working on it. And then all of a sudden you're at like 95 on the right and 79 on the left. 
and then you get to like 85 and then all of a sudden they're pretty much equal. You now own that and you fought through something. And oh. there's not just the, like not just the game has changed for you but the, like that that like I belong here. It, and that's huge. I mean everybody deserves that feeling and it's you know you're working through something that wasn't easy in the beginning to be like I own this. I own that left foot stop. Nobody can take that from me because I worked on it. Oh wow, that's, that's incredible. I'm sorry. I, I I just had to say that that yeah that because that's exactly how I felt when I started being able to skate backwards. Well, that's like that's all I wanted to do. I'm like, hey, coach, are we doing the back uh, the behind the uh, skating ba- uh, backwards? Did you want to see my backwards seas? I could do it. I could do it. I'll do it right now. Eh? You know, like so. That's and 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 the fact and the fact that like you, you really like to focus on them is is just huge. I think and and I, it's got to be huge. For the kids, just like you said, yeah, you really do own it, and it just becomes another tool on your belt, which makes you just a better skater. Oh, yeah. I can fully agree with what you just said there, Cody. Like, it makes you more of a multifaceted player. You're a Swiss Army skater, really. (laughs) A Swiss Army skater, dude, I love that. That's perfect. Oh, yeah, take, take that. Take that and run with it, Jen. Well, dang, Jen, uh, thank you so much for coming on and talking with us. I think we had a lot of fun. Um, oh, my gosh, it was a blast. I yeah, love it. Yeah, um, would you like to uh, send any shout-outs to anybody real quick uh, while we're on the air? Oh, I would love to. So I would like to shout-out to all of my skaters. I love you to pieces. You guys always work so hard, and my favorite kids are the ones that make me work hard. I love it when you guys all – come in and and give me a hard time so i have to work hard i love that and then everybody in columbus ohio and then all of my my coach friends around the world love love all of you to pieces and to on the bench with beaks dude i i loved being here this was fantastic so yeah big shout out to you guys too so and Thanks. one more question here. Um, if, oh, any, if anybody oh, at all, sneak uh, one in. if anybody at all wants to um, get involved um, with you and your association, what is your social media? Um, how do they get in contact with you? Okay, so the website super easy. It's Jen, like you know, skatewithjen.com, right? And then my email address is Jen at skatewithjen.com, and Instagram is skatewithjen. So pretty simple. Um, yeah, if you guys have any questions, by all means, shoot me an email and love to hear from everybody. Do you think we should sign up Matt Martinez for some skate lessons? Oh, with I think her? we should. I mean, <laughs> uh, Jen, this, uh, we got a buddy out here that uh, he, he, he plays a little beer league, and he's kind of like Benny Hill on those uh, roller skates. So we might we might get him a all all, uh, all expenses paid uh, skate with Jen clinic uh, time here soon. <laughs> that's like out of town that asks for help i'm like listen you know like the kids that come in for the summer and then they have to go you know wherever they're going to be skating for the year i'm like if you get into a point where you have like video that you want to send me i'll critique it and send it back i have no problem with that oh buddy oh that's beautiful so i mean you're you're basically uh you you're just you're out there waiting for people to help you and so that's huge that's great yeah yeah. i want to help everybody like i mean i love teaching i love what i do so you know if i can help somebody have like that aha moment and you know really fall in love with skating i'm all for it so oh that's awesome he i love it quite a few aha moments but oh, you'll you know, get there you'll, you'll get, get there, there but <laughs> your job is to take the footage we send you and send back to him being like now matt i can offer you one lesson a week but here's a pair of figure skates and I want you out there two days a week. And we're going to work oh. on your figure skating, too. And you're going to be amazing. Hey. And oh. we're going to watch that little birdie fly one day. Oh, we're he's, just... he's going to fly oh, free from his cage. Because you're at the dog bowl, too, Dan. So... <laughs> we love you, Matt. Anyways, Jen, thank you so much. So, so very much coming on talking with us. It was awesome. We had a great time. Um, yeah. uh, Ross, you got any shout outs? Just to all of our fans, all of our listeners, uh, friends, family, thank y'all. Big Daniel? Uh, I just want to say thanks uh, to My Beer Nation and uh, also uh, Dog Nation. They're a big uh, advocate of ours, too. And um, just really happy to to all the listeners. And 
I know when this airs, it'll be a little bit after the Stanley Cup finals has been uh, over and our brackets, uh, uh, bracket challenge and our hat trick challenge have been completed. Uh, but th- we're filming this at the time where we just figured out who won. So congratulations to Todd Sawatsky for go. our uh, hat trick challenge. And I believe uh, Kevin, Kenny, he, Wilcox. Kenny, Kenny, Kenny was uh, bragging the whole time. And, you know, oh, I, I'd like to good. think the only reason he won is because he had to pick the lightning. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, as a fan, but at the same time, I feel like he's just too big of a Jersey guy that he probably made some promises out there. Like if the lightning win this, I will get this. So, well, you, if you remember last episode, Keats and I both agreed that we would buy a a Tampa Bay lightning uh, Jersey. If the, if the lightning uh, won. So like you needed a, there goes another $280. Like like you needed an excuse, right? You're just fishing. So anyway, I just want to give a big shout out to uh, our sponsors and our listeners in that respect and also a congratulations to those two guys and uh thanks for listening and really appreciate it yeah. bryce what you got there bud uh shout out to jen i think you're being here um uh Aww. congratulations to uh the Tampa Bay lightning yeah. and let's hope that our boys here in colorado or avalanche will come back and do something next year shout out to them to get your stuff together um, but also shout out to, you know, our family and the speed tax family. That's it. Well, yeah, I, I gotta say thank you so much, Jen. And honestly, uh, I, I expect to see some kids coming out of Columbus, Ohio. That's, uh, that's, uh, breaking into the league. Just, uh, total freaking, uh, jets on their feet here soon. And, uh, thank you so much for coming on and talking with us and, Thank you to the uh, listeners and thank you to Be- my beer nation. So with that, I will say, um, be harsh. Have a good night. Aviento. Avida Zen. Salute. All right.